Um, I want to just talk about a couple of things, because we're very conscious that we're here at the NATO summit, which is, in a sense, the backdrop for what is the most extraordinary time in terms of the changes and challenges that we face. Of course, Europe is dealing with its economic issues, and you will have had time and chance to talk about those with people who have the expertise to do so. But for me, I see that economic backdrop in the context of the challenges that we're facing as a European Union in dealing with dramatic changes that are going on, not least in the neighborhood around the European Union, from Tunisia, Egypt, Libya, perhaps the most obvious examples, but also further afield in countries like Burma, where we're seeing rather dramatic changes as they move blinking into the sunlight of the possibility of the future that they could have. So both in the European Union and in the United States, there's a kind of reassessment and refocus that's been going on. But as John said, really, the partnership that we have between us, based on history and culture, but more than anything, based on the shared values that we hold, is what makes this partnership between the European <coughs> Union and the United States so critical to everything that I believe that we, we do. We live in difficult economic times, but that doesn't mean for me that we should do less. It means we have to do better with less. And that the European Union especially has to retain its commitment to shoulder its part of the burden of dealing with issues that I would frankly call global security issues. The role that was created that I embody was three jobs, in a sense, pushed into one. But its main purpose was to try and get the European Union to be able to develop the breadth of a foreign policy, security, and defense strategy that also encompassed within it development, trade, and economic life in general. In other words, what do we call in Europe the comprehensive approach? What that really means is that you can look across the wealth of ability that you have to intervene. In our development work, we're still the biggest donor of aid. In our work in economic terms to develop strong trade agreements to the benefit of the citizens of the European Union, but also using instruments like aid for trade to, su to support countries being able more freely to be able to develop their own capacity to engage with us in trade. It means thinking about governance, the rule of law, the kind of issues that are so critical to many countries, and then thinking too about the security issues in the broadest sense. Let me just give you one example of how that works, something that did not exist before the Lisbon Treaty and exists now, which is around the Horn of Africa, where we've developed what we've called this comprehensive approach, and that builds on a number of different elements that were kind of in place, but needed to be brought together. First of all, in the Horn of Africa, the support to prevent famine, the support to help develop the economy in many, many communities that have seen many years of difficulty and tragedy. It means providing the support for the security apparatus that means you can start to develop a government for the country and help Mogadishu become a place where you have schools and hospitals and the sort of infrastructure that's needed. It means training the support system through Amazon to enable soldiers to be trained to be effective in the region and to help deal with some of the challenges that they have. It means having 12 ships off the coast of Somalia under the Atalanta mission, which remains under my political control, but is a military mission run actually out of the UK on behalf of the European Union. But where the purpose is very clear, which is to deter piracy to support the World Food Programme delivering the aid to people who are suffering terribly, but also to prevent piracy from taking place. And last week, developing its mission further to actually try and stop the pirates being able to launch their boats from the beaches by actually attacking the boats on the ground. And then working on maritime security, helping those countries most directly affected by what's happening in piracy from Kenya to Tanzania down to the Seychelles, Mauritius, other countries, to be able to develop their own ability to patrol their waters and to deal with pirates directly. Working with the International Maritime Organization to support those companies who are 
sending their ships into the area to make sure they know how to deal with any attempted piracy attacks and to work with us to stick within the shipping lanes that will make sure that they are safe. And making sure too that the development of coastal security is well established and helping the leadership of those countries in the region to support what could happen in Somalia and the fledgling governments that can develop there now. So all of that is about the comprehensive strategy. And all of that needs to be coordinated properly, which is what the service does under Pierre Vimont. It's what we try and do within Europe, is make all of that work effectively together. Not just from the European institutions, but also from the 27 member states who are a critical part to that. So that's an example of what I mean by a comprehensive approach did not exist before Lisbon, existed in a fragmented form, does exist now, and is something on which we have to build.